2022. The film was called War Hunt. I got no idea what to expect. I recognise two people that I've seen in it so far. A uh, quarter of an hour into the movie. I didn't read the description. I just saw a little preview that looked like Second World War. Which it apparently is. So I'm hoping for zombies. Anyhow, it stars Mickey... Obviously, her. stars Mickey Rourke. He's always worth watching. He's a slow, droll actor. But he packs an emotional punch. He's got this contained rage inside of him, which I can relate to. And it comes across on screen. I've got no doubt whatsoever that everyone in life is as much of a cunt as I am. But I like, he, he is good on screen. He really is. He's only been on screen a little bit. There's another guy I recognise, the sergeant or the leader of this group. It was dark up until this point, night time. But I'm guessing... He's a guy, he used to play Harvey Moon 30, 40 years ago. English actor, I think. I'm not sure. Reasonably sure. It's a dark programme so far. It's just come to daylight. They find some bodies strung up, Predator style. And yeah, so far it's, it's pretty good. One thing that is, I don't know if it's intentional or not intentional, but one thing that really sticks out is all of their weapons and kits are shiny and new. This is a mistake that every single old-fashioned war movie makes. Every single one. Whether it's um, Tom Cruise, and I love his stuff, when he did The Last Samurai, whether it's Last of the Moccasins, or any of these war movies, Brian, whatever, they always make the same mistake. They think, because of the Second World War, all the equipment, all the kit, the weapons, have to look old because it's the Second World War. Does it ever occur to these fuckwits that maybe the guns were actually made during the war? Like when they were going on these mass give us your cooking saucepans so you can melt them down to make guns campaigns during the wars. So the fact they've actually got shiny weapons shows that it's a bit more realistic because they would have had new weapons. They wouldn't be fucking about with weapons from the First World War because they were making them brand fucking new. You know, bonds for bullets and stuff. Although one thing that would have added to the realism is having nice shiny new weapons, but then smearing them with boot polish. Or a bit of mud or clay, if you can find it. It's what you do to take away the glint, otherwise people can spot the reflection. So you put a bit of smear on it, like boot polish, boot black, and that way they don't reflect the light. You're not as obvious. But um, yeah, it's 15 minutes in and I'm not going to turn it off. I've gotten two minutes into the movie so pissed off or bored with it, I just turn it off and give up. Three movies today I've done that with. I didn't even bother re remembering the names of them. I just deleted them. This one, yeah, it seems right. I don't know if it's going to be zombies, aliens, anals. I don't know. That's the fun. I know they do it because it looks cool, but people do not do this in war. Having the bullets wedged into your bag, they don't do it. They sure as hell don't have them in a chest piece going across your fucking chest. Unless they're going to cover it up with a piece of cloth. Because doing it like this, first of all, those are going to fall out. Because they're upside fucking down. Because the, the main reason is they're shiny. Which means they can be spotted from half a mile away. And they're a really good target. Plus, not only are they a good target, if somebody hits one, they'll detonate all four. Other than that, good film. There's been no tit in it yet. Not even a single female. And we're 20 odd minutes into the movie. Which means, by modern standards, they're due to show to chuck in a couple of nips. We've had crowds, so we we'll probably do some nips. I swear to you, I did not fast forward it, but literally within a minute of me saying that, reduce um thing. Yeah, they're looking in the windmill and that's what they see. <sighs> it's been 10 years and one month and a week. <laughs> Initial reaction is keep the movie and watch it again. But 
I don't decide these things until 24 hours later. Like with Gator, I watched that yesterday. I'm going to keep this. It's a good movie. This morning, fuck it, delete it. It's good, but i got several thousand movies that are a lot better. It's good to watch once in your life. First of all, different. This one is probably going to be the same. It's a kind of okay buddy war movie. Pretty dark. No humour. It's a nice bit of drama. But then every now and again, some weird shit happens. Ghost appears out nowhere. It slits your throat. Captures the blood. There is a zombie. There was a zombie. It was that one German, though. It was a not Nazi zombie. It was a English airman. And had no organs, just black feathers inside of him. And he was animated and killing people. Um, yeah, it's alright. I'm probably going to delete it. Because it's not something that I'll probably watch again and again and again. It's something I'm going to watch once and then just probably just chuck it away, you know, tampon style. Most of it is fairly blah, 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 blah. But every now and again, something will happen out of the blue that you don't expect. Of course, now I've seen it once, I'll expect it next time. It's like the sergeant hunts down a pig and kills it and, yeah, he finally got a meal and everyone thinks they've got a pig to eat. And they've got it spit roasted up on the fire and they're all munching down the pork. Oh, we'll feed the Germans some as well, a German prisoner. And nine, 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 nine. That's right, fuck. It's the only German words Americans actually know. that. <laughs> Anyhow, then you look at the uh, pig being spit roasted. Turns out it's not a pig. It's an okay movie. It's just there are certain things that people do that are really, really predictable. And it's been going on for 40 odd years. So it's kind of obvious. You know it's going to happen. Whenever somebody puts on a mask or a helmet, you know damn well. They're about to fuck off phone for a cup of coffee and a fucking blowjob. And a stuntman, woman, whatever, is going to take over. Most recently, I watched um, not Mandalorian, the woke fucking follow-up. Bobby Fett. I kept two episodes of that because I had the Mandalorian in, in it. The rest of it I didn't bother keeping. It, it was basically two pensioners. I mean, fucking pensioners. And that creaking around like they can barely move, they're so fucking old. And then magically they put their helmets on and they can fly ninja, nigga, ninja, ninja, ninja all over the fucking leaping giant, all over the place. Magic! He's a magic! This movie is kind of the same where as soon as they put on the gas masks, you know they're gonna fuck off for a tea break and the stunt people are gonna take over. And lo and behold, Mickey the Rock all of a sudden becomes a ninja. Gets thrown around, smashed with this, smashed with that. Because you can't fucking see his face. You know damn well it's not him. There's only two actors that I can think of who actually do their own stunts. Don't say Jason Strapon. He's just an... I used to like his shit, but he's the same fucker in every single thing he does, except for Revolver, which is a brilliant film. But he's just another guy clinging to his youth, even though he's cracking on 60, who wants to be a black gangster rapper that's when I fucking gave up with him because he wants to be a black gangster rapper and I fuck that shit all that crap's the same singing songs you get the daytime version the online version then you get the proper online version which is all about black guys wanting to rape little white school children now fuck that shit for up the ass so um yeah Jean-Claude Van Damme and um Fucking hell, John Cruise, not John Cruise, Tom Cruise. Oh, and actually, it's actually anti Semitic. Um, fucking hell, Lethal Weapon guy, Mel Gibson. Those three guys do their stunts. Okay, Mel Gibson, not as much, but he actually does have a bit of a slap up sometimes. But Jean Claude Van Damme, Tom Cruise actually earned their action hero status, their name as action heroes. Every other fucker, nah, not anymore. Mickey Rourke, 20 years ago, he was playing an over-the-hill boxer. That was 20 fucking years ago. What is he now? Over the hill or far away? Don't look now, because he might be. He's a good actor, yeah, but... All he really does is this, in this, is like wander around, shoot a gun a couple of times, and scrunch down, and stick on a gas mask, and that's all you see. 
But um, yeah, at least he's doing more in the movie than, um, ah, oh, fuck his name. He used to be a really good action hero. Bruce Willis. Bruce Willis used to be in the movie. His name's on the movie. He'd be in the movie. He'd act in the movie. He'd do the shit in the movie. It was, it was his movie. But the past fucking 10 years, well, however it is since you last did um, Die Hard with a Bus Pass in Russia. Since that movie, all he seems to have done is stuck his name on the movie, popped up once, and then fucked off. The only exception was Apex, where he was actually in the movie for a bit more than two seconds. But, um, yes, I ain't going to keep this film. I am going to watch it till the end. However much, many more hours that will be. Okay, it's only an hour and a half. So, that's ah, all right. It's a good length. It's an okay movie. I'm not going to keep it, but it's worth the price I paid, which was nothing. Bye-bye.